meets the seasoned high-stakes crusher, Mikita Badziakovsky. With an uncanny ability to secure final table spots consistently, his presence is electrifying. Dive into this compilation to explore his strategic finesse and uncover the elements that make him a true standout. Delicate situation now for Makita in the small blind. 30 odd big blinds. Deciding how he wants to proceed. Will be V-pipping this hand versus a button open. Is it a three bet? Is it a shove? Is it a call? And goes for the call. Again, something you know you wouldn't do were this in the early stages of the tournament. Just Meaning it's going to be a three bet a lot of the time. Yes, exactly. Yes. Just beats a button opening range. You can just three bet. Ooh. Wow. Call the police. Nine. Nine, 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 nine. 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 <laughs> a lot of debate, Sam, going on in both chats on Twitch and on YouTube about the pros and cons of the shot clock. Mort 730 observing that 30 seconds isn't a lot of time to make these high-end decisions. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is one of the very challenging things about playing super high rollers. You're playing a huge bubble. Um, against elite poker players and under a shot clock and now you're on television. I mean, just remarkable. And Kulev putting out a little bit of money has probably more nines, has a lot more junk and a lot more air. Obviously has the, the stronger hands as well. And keeping his options open and his range wide. And I mean, I, I, I hope for, for people at home this is a treat. This is just very exciting to see, you know, one of the established greats and someone who's trying to make his name go head to head. And a brick four. King Jack, not ideal to be bluffing with, but yeah, Alex just covering. 225? Yeah, he just, he don't care. Wowee. And now just imagine yourself in Makita's <laughs> spot here. No thanks. Ace Jack, you just know, is going to be the best hand very often here. But what are you going to do on a whole host of rivers? Are your outs live? What are you going to do on a brick? What sorts of hands does Bajakowski think Kulev has that are beating him right now? Yeah, I mean, or is it sixes I mean, and sevens continue to he, play this he, way? He could have king four, you know. Uh, he obviously opens. Huh. <laughs> and king four, no good. <laughs> I mean, Makita could put out one big blind. Yeah. On occasion. Not that weird. I don't think he will. In general, it's Kulev who's who's polarized in the spot, and he's condensed. Oh, I heard something. I heard a number. 90,000, I believe. Yeah, the leads the 10%. And now Kulev has to decide, I mean, how he wants to go. Does he want to just call and chop this up? Or does he want to pressurize? Oh, folds. Well, there was another option. I assume you were getting to that. Oh, I assume wow. you were getting. Wow. And, and you know, I'm someone that really doesn't like to predict the action, but I'm a little bit surprised at that from Kulev. Thank you, sir will open the 5-4 suited. Um, Santosh with a hand that might ordinarily be a reshove on a wide opening range. Don't think we want to have pocket. He's just gonna, he's just gonna, <laughs> let's go. Let's go, let's get a little set mine, Santosh. Wow, yeah. Let's have a little set mine. Let's, let's have a little deuce of club. It's Do not often I can relate to a super high roller, but I can relate to this. He's just, he's ready to play. Two strawberries on the flop, flush draw for Budzikovsky. I mean, look, the set's clean at least. Yeah, and <laughs> Santos just has way, way the stronger range here than Makita. Uh, you know, Makita can't necessarily think that twos is in his range, but as you said, those two strawberries, very, very appealing. Could maybe, let's suppose we were to bet now, we could force out a king jack of clubs, a, uh, a, a, king, a king queen of diamonds type holding, and we have backing into the wheel, backing into the flush, fold out pocket sixes right now, and put out a little, you know, just a 20% bet to kind of perhaps make a few combos indifferent. 
Deuces oh, does not lose. Oh my goodness. It's just, wow. oh. I mean, by the way, a two would bring a wheel drop. Go on, two of clubs. <laughs> Instead, it's the four of it's space. It's just a sick out draw. Yeah, so Bodzikowski hits one of his outs and now has a 95% advantage. And this also means he can, if he were to face a bet, he could check call, but he might just start ramping up the pressure now. Obviously, the thing you're really scared of, of as Makita is eights and nines, right? Sort of unbluffable holdings. I think, yeah, checks. And Santosh gonna have to put a lot of money out there to get the job done. This is like showdown at the OK Corral, right? Yeah, I mean, Santosh with 19 bigs. Yeah, I mean, it's the size of bet it was going to take there. Just two pair. 450. And it goes big. Bet $450,000. There's plenty of bluffs that Makita could have. And Santosh just laying down the deuces. Much better to have any piece of the board, of course, than twos which sort of blocks bluffs i don't know 450 yeah he's putting in the majority he's putting half stacking half stacking the demi shove the demi shove if there's oh no this is very likely to be the end of orpin kisa sikaglu yeah very legitimate shove and makita who's run so well on this final with an absolute monster in the small blind. Pushing the stack into the middle. And open, not excited to be called all in or forced all in here. Orpen has made the call. Domination situation. Yeah, and to, you know, again, it's gonna seem like I have something against Bikini. It's not that at all, but I got a root for my boy Orpen. Um, big hero of the game. Orpen's gonna need to get lucky. Jack, nine, seven, two clubs, a spade. Not a lot there for Orpen to be excited about. Yeah, I guess. It goes. Some straight cards on the turn for a sweat. Yeah, no board pair, no diamond, nothing extra to work with. Turn is the eight of spades. <laughs> so that's gonna give him a couple of outs. Yeah, and removes the, the removes a queen. Spades, obviously, no. Removes a queen. Ah, and he's done it. He stood up. <laughs> River. The nine of spades giving Bajakovsky a flush. And that's going to be it for Orp the Turk. Eliminated from this super high roller in sixth place. Kula <laughs> with ace ten of diamonds on the button. Bajikovsky, the effective stack with 14 bigs behind. And we play a lot of limps and jams here. Um, 400. Does come in for a sizable, uh, for a min raise. Bajikovsky. Obviously. Oh. Ace Jack, it's a domination situation. And this is what we talked about. The prospect of the reversal. Bajikovsky doubling up through Kulev. Very unfortunate situation for Alex Kulev. Snap call here oh. from Alex. Ace yeah. 10. Wow. The all in and the call, and this could change the dynamic once again. Bodzikowski, a 64% favorite as we go to the flop. That flop, Ace 5 3. So a few opportunities. Bodzikowski now a 4 to 1 favorite to win. Turn card is the three of spades. I'll take it. A king, a queen to chop, a 10. River card is a 10. Whoa. And that will do it. Domination okay. rotation, river style. And that will see Alex Kulev take down the super high roller title here in Monaco. Mikita Bodzikovsky is the runner up for a seven figure score, just over a million euros. A trophy will be awarded on this stage. A player will be paid nearly $2 million. And we have Mikita Bodzikovsky with Queens under the gun plus one. Yeah, that's really how you want to start a final table playing for 2 million. He finds himself, you, you know, on that near danger zone 
Chipstack finds a way to battle back into it and oh, finish in the top three. Yeah, Nikki's in trouble. Just seven big blinds for Nick Petrangelo. And this could be triangle time. And it's really troubling for Nick because this is probably, you know, the bottom of Petrangelo's shoving range here. I think with Ace-10, we're probably able to be able to find a full recognizing the, um, you know, strength of Makita's open, but Ace Jack just a bit too good. There are going to be some raise folds, and now Mulder behind. We could just see an absolutely massive first hand here. Just give us a couple hands to warm up, you know? We've also got a lot of action behind still. There's still <laughs> yeah, gems yeah, yeah. out there, aces, yeah. maybe the other two queens. All in from turn Mulder. Yeah, and Makita has to, has to find a call here simply because Mulder is going to ISO Jax. Um, so it does make the call with Queens. You know, but not and super thrilled given the situation because there's not a ton of hands. Mulder's going to be third man in here. Here comes the flop, which has Ooh. a jack. Oh, oh a queen. my. Too many flops. And two clubs. Yeah, yeah, Nick all but out the door here. Wow. Petrangelo. Just less than 1% chance. So much drama. Mulder with the Broadway draw and the nut flush draw. Bodzikovsky, 68% equity with the set of queens. Nine on the turn. Nine of spades, that is. And Nick Petrangelo is now drawing dead. Jack of clubs. One time, jack of clubs. The river is the four of hearts. So queens hold. Bodzikovsky wins the main pot and the side pot. Effectively, more than doubles up through turn Mulder, and Nikki Petrangelo is eliminated. And Bajikowski is going to raise from the button with King-7 offsuit. Seidel is out. 7-5 offsuit for Piquet in the big blind, and this is going to be a... We can still peel with this hand, right, with 15 big blinds? Yeah, no, you probably should as well. I know the stop and go isn't really used anymore, but it is kind of a stop and go situation sometimes, right? Like if you yeah. hit, if somehow can make top pair, hit a seven here. Obviously, that would be a disaster for Piquet. Sure. Oh, oh not a disaster days. to hit bottom two pair in this case. Oh, a huge disaster. Yeah, it's absolutely huge disaster. <laughs> the biggest disaster ever. Oh my goodness. Bottom two in big, big trouble against top two. I uh, I no. sure I'm gonna miss that hat. I think 7-5 is definitely a, definitely easily defendable here. Just a catastrophic flop here. And not only are you getting it in bad here, but your equity is almost it, yeah. nil. Yeah. Single digit equity. Makita might be kind of confused. Like what else is out there? He's like, I've got King Seven. This guy really have King excuse me, does he really have King Five? Seven five? Because pairs are going in pre-flop, so there's no real sets of sevens and fives, right? Right, exactly. That's exactly right. You can cap your opponent's range here to not having too many sets. I mean, kings maybe, very maybe, but probably not. Yeah, he's probably thinking, how small can I go here in order to get the chips on the river? He opts for the check instead. Very interesting. Little check raise, slow down. I like this a lot because he might check raise if he has like a straight draw and then slow down and then the king seven is more confident. Or in this case, he's hoping that he has hand like king queen, of course, right? He's not he's not checking to give up. So he's like, okay, make it look like a bluff. This guy can continue betting or he can bluff at me and I'll get all the chips in the middle, no problem at all. He's only got 1.9 million behind, so it's just over, over uh, SPR one. Cheese and Onion says it has to go all in on this street. Makita betting five... 100,000, it feels like all in on this street. I mean, it's like a quarter of his, of Paquet's stack and there's already 2.2 dead in the middle. So any all in is gonna be less than pot. All in. That's it, he's all in. The double check raise. Piquet all in, snap call by Bajakowski and only a 5% chance Piquet survives this. I'm going to save, I'm going to save this would be a miracle. Look at that! Look at that face, Joe. Bajakowski, pretty happy. Knows he is very likely to be going heads up, and they are going heads up. That's it for Kevin Piquet. That's the kind of hat that should come with a free bowl of soup. But luckily, Piquet has got plenty of money to pay for one. Seidel is sticking with his usual strategy here, just calling on the button. Bajakowski checks in the big blind 
again, <clears throat> this is what we've seen a lot of during this heads-up battle. I mean, I don't think they can play into the next level. The blinds are already 250,000, 500,000. Yeah, I mean, theoretically, Saito could be shoving hands like this pre-flop at 13 big blinds effective, but I actually prefer this line anyway. Knowing your heads-up Nash equilibrium charts, absolutely critical, crucial, if you want to be good at poker. You got to know where the line is. You got to know where that equilibrium push fold situation exists so that you can decide whether or not that's what you want to do or if you'd like to take an alternate route. Check, check on the flop. Bodzikowski bets the turn. Eric with the advantage with that pair of sevens. Bodzikowski with a gut shot straight draw. And gets there on the river. It is the nine for the straight. Yeah, I mean, as far as rivers go, not too shabby for 10-8, but I'm pretty sure Seidel's plan here was to probably just try and get to showdown for cheap. I think there's a very good chance that uh, another barrel would have won this on the river regardless, unless it came like, you know, the deuce of hearts or some brick like that, and he could justifiably call. Bajkowski obviously could have missed straighting cards and then obviously yeah. some missed flushes and Four stuff like two. that. And goes for max value near enough, 4.2 million. And Eric Seidel smiles, does not even seriously consider heroing with a pair of sevens there. <laughs> yeah. Both these guys have achieved success in the 100K on the European Poker Tour before. And hand 123 of the final table. Sees Bodziakowski pick up ace four of clubs on the button. I think he's probably just going to push this in, James. We are 10 big blinds effective after all, and there is still that ante out there. All in. He's all in. Shoves on Seidel. All right, queens. Eric Cole saying, I have queens. Two black queens. And Eric Seidel gets it in good here against mm -hmm. Mikita Bodziakowski. And if queens the hold, that is going to flip the situation yeah, around. Yeah, absolutely. This could be his way back in. It's been a lot of flips on this final. Pocket queens, the black Mariah right there. Two to one favorite for Seidel. But there is an ace on the flop, always an ace on the desk. And Seidel is now drawing thin. Two outs, 9%. Needs hit on the turn or river or we have our winner. The jack on the turn gives Eric Seidel addition out. He does lose. The queen of clubs is an out. The actual black Mariah. Queen of diamonds, any king. Seidel survives. Any other card? Mikita Bodzikovsky wins. It's a blank and we finally have a conclusion in this 100k super high roller. It is Mikita Bodzikovsky. The recipient of that first place prize and the golden trophy is Mikita Bodzikovsky. Congratulations, you are the EPT Barcelona super high roller champion. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe for more awesome poker content and check out this video. The YouTube algorithm seems confident you'll like it.